This is 5 Minute Friday on Stable LM. Stability AI, the company that's best known for the open source and super popular text to image generator Stable Diffusion, they just made headlines by releasing the first models from their open source suite of Stable LM language models. So this stands for, uh, well, Stable, their company name, Stability AI. And then the LM is a language model. So stable LM, stable language model. In previous episodes, I talked about uh, single GPU large language models. And this these new stable LM language models also fit in that umbrella. So these are small enough to fit on one large GPU for training. And you could potentially even do quantizing to uh, get these at inference time small enough to fit on a CPU. So these stable LM models are super super efficient, um, just like LLMs covered in previous episodes. For example, in episode number 672, I talked about the gpt 4 J and Dolly 2.0 LLMs, which are similar in size to these new uh, stability AI models. And uh, these new stable LM models are also similar to gpt 4 J and Dolly 2.0 in that all three of these model families are acceptable for commercial use. So this means that using the uh, parameter efficient fine tuning that I talked about in episode number 674, you can quickly and easily fine tune gpt 4 j Dolly 2.0, or this new uh, family, stable LM family, um, to your, you can fine tune them to your own proprietary data, to your own problem domain, or to your own customer use case. So super useful, you can have GPT-4 like capabilities um, for your own particular use case running on your own infrastructure. So why am I back again today talking about another new model? Why is this stable LM newsworthy beyond the GPT-4 LJ and Dolly 2.0 models that I had talked about previously? Well, so um, like some of those models that I talked about previously, um, these new stable LM models are very small. So they are uh, much easier to work with on a single GPU, faster to train, uh, you're gonna have faster inference times. So the two model sizes with these new, that have been released so far by stable LM are a seven billion parameter model and critically a three billion parameter model. And so that is like the Dolly 2.0 family that I talked about previously. The big difference, is that in addition to being small, portable, easy to train, these models, these new stable LM models are trained on an unprecedented amount of training data for uh, these kinds of single GPU LLMs. So uh, we know from previous episodes like the Chinchilla Scaling Laws episode that I had, episode number 676, as well as the Llama episode that I had, episode number 670, that training for much longer, so uh, tr- having a training data set size that's at least 20 times bigger than the number of model parameters that you have, this can make a big difference to the quality of the model. And this, with the stable LM family, stable diffusion went even further. I mean, for, for the first step of training, uh, they have a crazy amount of data. So remember that for any of these GPT-4-like models, there are two training steps. So the first step is pre-training and the second step is fine tuning. So in that pre-training step, we we are giving the model a broad range of natural language to work with for to begin to understand um, the kinds of things that humans would like to see. But it's really in this second step that we fine tune um, specifically on Uh, uh, this approach called reinforcement learning from human feedback, where we have um, examples of exactly the kind of output that we would ideally like to see the model output in a given circumstance. And so it's that fine tuning that gets us from uh, something more like GPT-3 caliber outputs to GPT-4 caliber outputs. So let's talk about the first step first, pre-training. So architectures like DALI use an open source, a really big open source data set called the pile. But 
the folks at Stable Diffusion with this new Stable LM architecture, they created an even bigger data set. It's three times larger. So it has 1.5 trillion tokens in it. So tokens, you can hear more about these in episode number 626 when I talk about subword tokenization with byte pair encoding. For the purpose of this episode, you can simply think of a token as a word, but in practice, it's really subwords, so components of words. So this new data set that Stable Diffusion came up with has 1.5 trillion of these tokens, and this makes it three times bigger than the pile that was previously used to do the pre-training on most of these single GPU LLMs. And uh, so for example, for the three billion parameter uh, stable LM model, they used 800 billion tokens from their big new 1.5 trillion token data set. And so that's 267 times more tokens than there are parameters in the model. Uh, you might remember from the Chinchilla Scaling Laws episode number 676 that that research showed that having 20 times more um, tokens than parameters gave great results and that training beyond that, like they did with the Llama uh, language models in episode number 670, uh, showed that you can get even better results by training even longer. And so with Stable LM, Stable Diffusion have gone even further with this, as far as I know, unprecedented uh, for a model of this size, having for this 3 billion parameter stable LM model, having 267 times as many tokens for training, this should lead to an amazing model. And that's just for the pre-training step. So the pre-training step uh, will land us with um, a model that's comparable to the performance of GPT-3. And people were very impressed with the performance of GPT-3 when that came out a couple of years ago. But it's the second training step, the fine tuning that, as I mentioned earlier in the episode, is the key to getting these really intuitive chat GPT-like or GPT-4-like results. And so in order for to do that fine tuning effectively, the authors, the stable diffusion folks, they use the alpaca procedure. So I talked about the Stanford alpaca um, model and data set back in episode number 672. Um, and so they follow that procedure, but again, just like in their pre-training step for this fine tuning step, the stable diffusion folks are again using way more data than any comparably sized LLMs previously. So for this new stable LLM family, they are using the alpaca data, plus they're using the 800,000 instruction response pairs from GPT-4 all. They're using the 52,000 exemplary instruction response pairs from the share GPT tool. They're using the 15,000 that were used in Dolly, and they're using um, the HH, which is the helpful and harmless data that's provided by Anthropic, Anthropic being um, a startup that is particularly focused on creating big uh, large language models that are ethical. So that ethical data set is in there too. In total, there's about a million instruction response pairs for these stable LM models to fine tune on, which is on the order of a hundred times more instruction response pairs than Dolly 2.0, which is kind of the benchmark um, that I've been weighing stable LM against throughout this episode. So you can anticipate that this new stable LM uh, model family is super powerful. It's open source, it's available for you today. Um, so I provided a link to the Hugging Face repository to go grab these models straight away and start playing with them yourself. You can even go right now to chat interactively with the fine-tuned 7 billion parameter stable LM model. You can do that right away. Uh, so you don't even need to download anything. You can just use it right in your browser. I've got a link for you to do that in your show notes. So that's something exciting that you can do today. Um, play with it. I have a feeling that you're going to be really impressed with the quality of this stable LM model, and then maybe consider fine tuning it for your own proprietary purposes. In addition, I've got good news for you that coming down the pike, Stable Diffusion has additional models coming. So they've already released the 3 billion and 7 billion parameter architectures. In addition, they have 15 billion, 30 billion, and 65 billion. Uh, parameter models in progress. On top of that, they're planning 
on doing a 175 billion parameter model, which would be on par with the original GPT-3 architecture size. Now size isn't everything, as we know, training data set size, training time, make a big difference as well, as well as these fine tuning steps. So I don't think we need to have a model that's 175 billion parameters to um, meet or exceed the performance of GPT-3. Indeed, it wouldn't be surprising to me if this 7 billion parameter, maybe even the 3 billion parameter stable LM model could outperform GPT-3 on many benchmarks and maybe even get comparable performance to GPT-4 in a lot of cases. So really exciting to have uh, organizations going out and putting so much effort into curating these enormous open source data sets, making them available for us and releasing the model weights for us to get going with them right away. So thanks to Ed Donner, one of my co-founders at uh, Nebula, my machine learning company, for pointing me in the direction of uh, Stable LM, making sure that I didn't miss it uh, and I didn't miss a chance to create an episode for you folks on Stable LM. Big new innovation, potentially very powerful for you to work with. Um, so that's it for my update for today. Until next time, keep on rocking it out there, folks, and I'm looking forward to enjoying another round of the Super Data Science Podcast with you very soon. Mm-hmm.